Okay, hi there. Welcome uh, to the first of two micro videos. We're going to take a look at some of the demand and supply side factors influencing the, the global price of crude oil or liquid gold, as it's sometimes called. Here's a chart showing the world price of crude oil. Uh, it's an average of Brent, Dubai and West Texas intermediate oil all the way from the, the start of 2020 through to the middle of October 2020. And you can see there was a dramatic collapse in the world price of oil on the futures markets. The price of oil for future delivery was close to zero at one point in, uh, in late April, early May 2020. It's recovered a little bit since to about $40 per barrel, but it's still well below where it was this time last year. <clears throat> this chart shows how much oil the world consumes. And uh, you can see that there's a seasonality to the data. For example, typically oil consumption goes up in the winter because of increased demand for heating oil. Equally, more people travel during the summer months, so there might be an increased demand for things like jet fuel. But there was a steady increase in oil consumption between 2015 and 2019, in part because the world economy was doing particularly well. Then we get the pandemic, then we get this huge demand shock lockdown in many countries, uh, travel disrupted, industries uh, shutting down temporarily, a uh, huge, uh, huge downturn in demand or consumption for oil. The blue dotted line shows the forecast recovery in consumption. But can you see here that the forecast is the consumption of oil will not recover to where it would have been had oil consumption, crude oil demand continued its pre pandemic trend. We're going to be mentioning OPEC in this video series. OPEC, O-P-E-C, stands for the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, a cartel of producers established in Iraq in 1961. And at the moment, OPEC, which includes countries such as Algeria, uh, Iraq, Iran, Kuwait, Nigeria, for example, uh, they uh, they supply about 40% of the world's total crude oil production together, 40%, and about 16% of the world's natural gas output. Now, OPEC is a cartel. Some of you will have come across the idea of a cartel in your year 12 economics, others may not. So very quickly, what is a cartel? Well, it's any organisation that seeks to control supply. They come together as a group of producers, and their aim is to control supply of a product, in this case, crude oil, with the aim of stabilising, controlling, influencing the price of oil. One of their long-term aims is to keep the price relatively high to generate more tax dollars and profits for the major oil producers. Keep in mind in many countries, of course, the government is also the owner of the main oil extracting businesses. Here's a quick quiz. Uh, here are seven countries. Uh, are, which one of these are members of OPEC in 2020? Press the pause button for a couple of minutes, have a go. I reckon if you get five out of seven, that's a pretty impressive score. Okay, so how many how many will you get? We'll go through these. In recent years, OPEC's membership, the number of countries that are members of OPEC has changed quite a bit. Uh, Saudi Arabia is part of OPEC. Qatar has left OPEC. I think it left in 2018. Um, Qatar is one of the oldest members of OPEC. They've now left the system, in part because they're switching their investments to liquefied natural gas. Norway is not a member. Equatorial Guinea uh, joined in 2017. Angola is in there. Gabon joined OPEC in 2016. Uh, and the United States is not a member. So of that group, four countries are in, three are not. This chart's interesting. It shows... OPEC's share of the market, obviously there's obviously rises and falls, but I've truncated the y-axis there, that's why there's quite a big up and down in the chart. <clears throat> but you can see that OPEC's share of production is, is around 40%, uh, although in 2019 it was down quite substantially at 39%. Uh, the price of oil, the price of oil that OPEC sells their crude oil has been very volatile, virtually zero, very cheap oil in the 60s, then the big spike in oil prices in the early 70s downward trend in the early 90s. And then, of course, we've had some, some big spikes in oil prices in the last 10 years, including a peak of over 100 US dollars per barrel. But it's now, again, back down at $40 a barrel. <clears throat> of, the, of the major 
suppliers, the leading oil producing countries last year. In fact, it's the United States that is the biggest producer of global crude oil. Uh, sorry, the biggest producer of crude oil globally. 17.9%. Uh, Saudi, 12.5%. Russia, has 12%. Then Canada. And if you look at the distribution of global oil reserves, uh, you can see that, in fact, Venezuela leads with the highest distribution of global oil reserves, approximately well, just under 18%, followed closely by Saudi Arabia. Canada is the third biggest share, uh, mainly uh, because the, the oil there is found in oil sands, <coughs> pardon me, just as in Venezuela. Oil sand production is quite big in Canada. A lot of the United States oil production, of course, is shale oil, shale oil produced via fracking, which is controversial. So what are the key demand factors influencing uh, the price of oil? So clearly the price of oil will reflect the two forces of supply and demand. Once you understand your supply and demand factors, you can apply these factors to virtually any market. I think the key one is probably economic growth. You see, oil is used for many reasons. So when countries like China and Germany and the UK and the United States, when those countries are experiencing strong economic growth, when their GDP is, is rising, they typically use a lot of oil. OK, so the demand for oil goes up. So the demand for oil globally is quite cyclical. <clears throat> it rises and falls with the economic cycle. Second factor I've listed there is technological change. Uh, over time, of course, we should be looking to find ways of using scarce resources more efficiently. Um, Airbus and Boeing developing lighter aircraft, lighter aircraft which are much more fuel efficient. For each given flight, therefore, they use less jet fuel. Another key demand factor is the relative price of a substitute for oil. So we think about uh, the prices of natural gas, Definitely thinking about the price of renewable energy, including solar, uh, wind uh, energy, and the price of nuclear. If the price of renewable energy goes down, for example, you would expect there to be some switch away from oil, perhaps, towards renewables. A fourth factor is not just the price of substitutes, but the cost of switching. I asked my students this in, students this in lessons today, and a couple of students actually, their homes are heated using heating oil which is delivered. Uh, and I said to him, well, if the price of heating oil went up 20%, let's say, between now and Christmas, would you switch to another source of energy? And they both said no, because the cost of switching is many thousands of pounds and you can't justify it. Fifth, fifth demand factor is the change in the energy policies. So countries now, governments increasingly trying to achieve uh, sustainability targets, trying to cut emissions, China is introducing import tariff in US oil. Many countries have or are thinking of introducing carbon taxes. So that could have an impact on the demand for, for oil which as a sort of anti-pollutant measure. And then finally, don't, un don't underestimate behavioural change. Uh, at a macro level, although this is the global oil market, at a macro level, the price reflects the micro decisions of many billions of people. Do you use your car? Do you use a diesel fuel car or an electric car? Uh, do you work from home or travel to work? How, how often do you want to travel overseas, for example? Behavioural change can have quite a big impact on the demand side. A really key concept, I think, to note is the idea of derived demand. Derived demand. And that's where the demand for X, let's say this is oil, the demand for X is derived from the final demand for other other goods and services. So the demand for crude oil is actually linked to what crude oil is used to make, to power machinery in factories, to, to fuel jets in the air. Oil is used in manufacturing plastics and in pharmaceuticals. So therefore, there's quite a strong derived demand for oil in the world economy. Now, finally, what about supply? Price of oil must reflect the forces of demand and supply. Well, here are four supply factors. The fundamental factor, the biggest single factor, is cost. What does it cost to get crude oil out of the ground 
both in the short term and the long term. How easy, how costly is it to get oil out of the ground? For some countries, oil reserves are becoming more expensive to extract. The marginal cost of those remaining oil reserves are pretty high. For other countries like Saudi Arabia, the price remains fairly low. Another key factor is investment rates in oil exploration and extraction inputs. So we look, for example, at a number of new oil rigs being established. That, that's a good forward indicator of investment and future supply. How many countries are producing oil? How many countries discover and produce? And crucially, what other objectives? Do they want high prices in the short term, in which case member nations in OPEC might limit supply? Or are they willing to keep prices low now, increase supply, and, uh, and, and get some extra revenue that way. <clears throat> and the final supply side factor is the relative price of and the profitability of substitutes to oil. So renewables have become cheaper. In theory, renewables becoming more profitable, although many still depend on subsidy. So if renewables become more profitable, uh, some big oil companies may decide to shift some of their crude oil investment away from oil towards renewables in search of higher profits. Okay, that's the end of video one. We've looked at supply and demand factors. In the second video, we'll take this story to the demand and supply curves and think about what can cause changes in prices. Okay, thank you very much indeed.